Aber jetzt hört ihr mich? Ja. Sehr gut. Mann, Mann. Jawohl, jetzt ist gut. Dann starten wir nochmal. Gut. I'm checking the chat for a second. Okay. Good. Um, sorry for that. Uh, we tested this earlier, but I didn't get any. It doesn't matter. So let's start again. Um, sorry for the lack of Latech Beamer. Um, hopefully, you're not hungover, of course, um, <laughs> no in person. Um, these are the themes of what we'll be talking about. Um, anything with an asterisk is, is closed source. Um, we'll be talking about that also in a second. As we published this just yesterday, uh, let's take a look at the top data sources, not because they're so great or anything, but point is um, this might be a good reminder of um, of what we have. Uh, of course, a few of them might be non-obvious uh, to some people. And honestly, it's hard for even myself to keep up with all the developments because there's just so much so much stuff going on at, at all times. Um, Google Sheets is non-obvious and nice, um, yeah. So let's delve into the large themes of what happened in, in open source in, in recent uh, month, last year, what have you. Um, first would be the panel editor and, and generally the visualizations. Um, we have an ever expanding UX team and, and working with them, I know how much work they put into, into making um, this easier um, because a lot of a lot of those design decisions you don't ever see and that's actually good design where you don't notice that it's there but it still works for you like discoverability something which I didn't know before joining Rafana Labs this concept this concept of of putting stuff into a place where it's easy to to discover yourself you don't have to read the documentation or anything you just start um, exploring yourself and you get enough holding to get through the thing without being blocked but also it's uh, just gets in the way and that that takes an insane amount of work and there were huge improvements all over grafana with uh, with these um like just how how you interact with the thing to make this smoother and we're not done yet we are overhauling the time picker for example because that's large and it will become more streamlined um then uh, for for panels um, in particular if you have a ton of data or if you have complex operations those panels tend to be um slow and that is not great um so uh, a lot of work went into into making this smoother and quicker and i hear that um there are sound hiccups but earlier we were fine well john seems to be better now okay um and for kind of obvious reasons like given grafana loki and and tempo and such um we invested a ton of time into making non-time series panels uh more front and center where you can extract value and, and meaning from things which are not just time series and metrics but also logs and such and then don't have to convince anyone in this audience that logs are highly relevant um, for the interactive mode or now called metrics browser or log browser and such um, we also worked a lot on making this easier and more streamlined so those queries don't build themselves yet, but it becomes a lot easier to build them. Of course, if you make common mistakes, uh, those are caught, they are highlighted. Um, we make suggestions of, hey, did you try to do this and that? So maybe try this thing instead. Um, we try and automatically reduce the overall uh, cardinality or the overall uh, visibility of labels. If they are not relevant to the, the current query, you can switch this off if you get it right uh, wrong. But by and large, if you have a Prometheus query and you have like this amount of labels, um, it just reduces this to, to the amount of labels which you're caring about, which is nice. Um, then something which is very dear to my heart, and that's one of the, another one of those stories which is not yet done. Um, there, um, we want to enable more reuse of, of panels of dashboards, um, so you don't rewrite more or less the same thing three times. Um, of course, you have subtly different views of a thing. You can actually start reusing components. Um, and that's not done yet. Uh, Torkel and I have something which I like to call uh, containers of containers, where you basically have a directed graph of, of um, containers which contain other containers or panels, um, which could in theory replace all the things and like, yeah, 
um, even automated uh, drill downs if, if a, a section becomes larger and such, but that's not there yet. But what we already do have is more reuse. And, and uh, if you change it in the central thing, it automatically propagates through everything else, um, which, is, which is nice. One of my other pet peeves has been solved. Um, historically in Grafana, if you like followed all of the documentations, you ended up with three different types of alerts. Um, completely different classes, different feature sets, different UI, different UX, different uh, bells and whistles, different uh, corner cases. It's not great. Um, and while I don't agree that uh, Prometheus has non-user friendly alerts, I do have to acknowledge that a lot of people think this. So whatever, this is something to improve. Um, one thing which which I absolutely um, despise, well despise, but yeah, really don't like about historic Grafana alerts is how historically Grafana alerts were tied to a dashboard. So um, you copied the dashboard and also you started copying uh, alerts. You deleted that one dashboard you thought no one needed anymore and the alert is gone. Like those kinds of things that just doesn't make sense. Alerts are orthogonal from, from, um, from visualization visualization like they are closely related and they should be used together but they're definitely completely orthogonal and need to be treated orthogonally as such um, the new alerting alerting ng in grafana is based on alert bridger grafana itself emits prometheus style alerts we are also writing currently the compatibility suites where we can where we can um, test that we do everything right um, and with my prometheus set on that will be ascertained um, and then everything can go into, into proper alert managers. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's one of the embedded alert managers or if it's one of the um, other alert managers, uh, which are, which are running somewhere else. Um, of course that allows you to, to treat this distinctly, but this also allows you to, from non Prometheus type data sources, create Prometheus type alerts, shove them into the same pipeline and, and everything just happens as you want it. And for anyone who like, Streaming telemetry is, is a little bit of a contentious topic in, in this field of networking, I guess. Um, but like, if you are into this type of thing, we have real-time streaming and you can just like live visualize all the things if you so choose. Um, it's arguably more interesting in IoT industrial use cases and, and such, but um, there are also valid use cases in, in networking. Something which is not there yet. This is what the basis of what will hopefully become a weather map at some point. Um, where you also like can overlay graphs, can underlay different uh, types of things, not just geographic overviews, but this is something relevant for, for the networking crowd, but this is actually like there is movement and we have a first class, first party panel type, which allows you to do this type of thing. Going to the closed source stuff, um, and we'll have this quick. I do like food and shelter, so talking about this a little bit, but also the other thing is like we have the sniff test. Do the users, the intended users, have more uh, money than time or more time than money? Which um, if you have more time than money, it tends to be in like that, uh, that feature tends to be in open source. If they have more money than time, that feature tends to end up in enterprise or cloud offerings. Query caching in particular in large deployments. And when you have like those humongous um, dashboards, you know, to uh, scroll through, sometimes you are in the order of tens of seconds for dashboard load, which is not great. Um, with query caching, we can get this to, to sub seconds. In particular, nice if you have a stampeding effect, like you have this outage and 20 different people want to look at it, one thing at the same time. Well, with crashing in Grafana, what now happens is you can simply directly, um, everyone sees the same thing and they don't have to all do the full backend queries uh, for themselves. But again, if if you want to build this yourself, like Cortex has caching uh, built in, um, Trickster exists, like there are other ways. Grafana does also be, uh, alignment of queries. Like a lot of those things can also be built with open source, but again, uh, more money than time versus more time than money. Um, fine grid access control, um, which, um, oh, I'm already over time, I realized, of course, we had a bumpy start. Um, yeah, fine grid access control. You can decide who gets what. Um, reporting for those who use it or for those who don't know, like you can set, send PDF reports to people, which is nice. Um, um, and I built this myself at SpaceNet before joining Grafana. So again, you can build this yourself. 
Also, FYI, tonight uh, Observability Con starts for two days, um, and there will be one announcement which is highly relevant for this crowd. Thank you, and yeah, 30 seconds over in, in talk time, including the gap at the beginning. Um, Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Let's have two short questions. Um, uh, when is there an option to change the color of Any the Any update on the timeline of updating all dashboards at once? No, I don't think so. Change the color of crosshair. Um, contact me on Twitter or by email. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.